Hi there, Dr. Doug Lucas here, retired orthopedic surgeon, now focusing my practice on health span and bone health. Do you have osteoporosis or osteopenia and you wonder just how did your doctor come to the conclusion to make that recommendation for a medication? Well, a lot of times doctors are using a tool called the FRAX tool, and it is a fracture assessment tool, fracture risk assessment tool that doctors can use to help give a number to what your fracture risk may be. When I see patients come to me and they've been frustrated by this experience, what we do is to go through what this traditional modality is and then talk a little bit more about why that might be true, what some other alternative options are. So I think it's important that they understand, hey, this tool exists, this is what's in it, and let's use it as a tool to help monitor how we're improving our fracture risk over time. So I think it's really important that people with osteoporosis understand what this tool is. And if that's you, stick around. So just what is FRAX? Well, FRAX is a fracture risk assessment tool. And FRAX is a tool that came out of a massive study of over 60,000 participants that looked at a number of risk factors for fracture, for osteoporosis, and put them together in a tool that can then be extrapolated to a number of different populations. So it is a well-validated fracture risk tool that supposedly is pretty accurate at estimating fracture and much more so than bone mineral density alone. So what makes the FRAX unique is that it looks at bone mineral density, but it also looks at things like age, sex, BMI, your fracture history, other secondary risk factors like genetics, a lot of uh, environmental risk factors as well, some of them controllable, some of them not, but it puts all of those things together to come up with an actual 10 year fracture risk. So it gives you a percentage of actually having either a major osteoporotic fracture, which I'll talk about that later, or specifically a hip fracture. And then there are medication recommendations that come out of that absolute number. So then a doctor who even isn't that well versed in osteoporosis can input all this data and come out with a recommendation for a medication or not. And I think oftentimes this is what happens, which is not certainly wrong by any means because they're following the guidelines. But as we'll talk about later, this doesn't necessarily follow my recommendations, which is, hey, let's figure out why you're losing bone. But it's a good idea to know how at risk you are of fracture because we need to understand how quickly we need to intervene and how powerfully. So like all study-based tools, this tool also has its weaknesses. And, and one of the biggest weaknesses that's cited in the literature is that the FRAX doesn't take into account things like falls or other any other items that actually aren't listed as inputs in the equation. If somebody is having falls, obviously they're gonna be at higher risk for fracture and this doesn't go into it. So again, it's not perfect, but it does show in study after study, validation after validation, to have a high consistency between observed and predicted fracture rates. Therefore, it is a valuable tool for people in helping especially doctors to make the decision of whether or not to recommend pharmaceuticals. So the FRAX is a free tool that you can just go to, if you Google FRAX, you'll go right to the website and you can see exactly what the doctors are using and looking at. And what you'll notice if you start playing around with it is that the recommendations are very clear. And I just wanna review them with you here, which is that if you have a T-score of less than a negative 2.5, then you already meet criteria for a pharmaceutical, according to these recommendations. If you have a T-score between negative 1.0 and negative 2.5, then you meet criteria if your FRAX shows that you have a greater than 3% chance of hip fracture uh, for 10 years, or if you have a greater than 20% chance of major osteoporotic fracture. So that definition is gonna depend on, on who you're talking about, but here it is specific to pelvis, hip, spine, upper arm, and I think forearm are all included in that basket. So those are the three major criteria that doctors should be using if they're following these guidelines to make a recommendation for a pharmaceutical. Now, the last part of these recommendation is that clinical judgment and patient preferences may indicate treatment for people with 10-year fracture risk below these thresholds and T-scores above these thresholds. So doctors are allowed to do whatever they think is clinically relevant, but this is exactly what the World Health Organization and the FRAX consensus is coming to you from a recommendation perspective. 
Sorry to interrupt this Frax conversation, but if you're enjoying this content, please like, subscribe, and sign up for notifications so we can let you know when our next video is available. If you know anybody that would benefit from this information, please share it with them so that they can learn about this information and other content within this channel. And lastly, if you wanna learn more about what we do and other tips and tricks you can do on your own, look for the link for our free masterclass in the description below. All right, so I'm gonna pull up a couple of examples here. So these pictures are screenshots of the actual Frax tool. And so in this first one, this is actually me. So this is not your standard patient, but if someone were to evaluate my risk on the Frax tool, this is what it would show. All right, so what you can see here is that it inputted my age, I inputted my sex, my weight, my height, and there's a little conversion tool for pounds to kilograms and inches to centimeters. Um, and then answered all the questions. So did I have a previous fracture? Did my parents have a fracture? Uh, am I currently smoking? Have I used or am using glucocorticoids? And that's an important one. Have you used for longer than a week? Um, diagnosis of rheumatoid arthritis. Do I have secondary osteoporosis, which you may need some help to answer this question from your healthcare team. Um, do you drink three or more drinks or units uh, per day of alcohol? Be honest on that one. Um, and then it asks you about your femoral neck bone mineral density. So I have a T-score actually of negative 1.5, so I have osteopenia. And if you then calculate all of that, it gives me a, a risk of major osteoporotic fracture over the next 10 years of 3.1%, which I feel like is probably high, but I don't know what's gonna happen in the next 10 years. And then hip fracture less than 1%, which is probably realistic. Uh, the likelihood of me having either of those fractures, I think, is probably lower than that. Um, but I don't think this is unrealistic. But again, I'm not really the target population here. So let's look at a second example. All right, so here is another example. And this is a patient that is more, more like the patients that we're seeing in the bone health group. So this is a patient who we have, and this is a, a made up patient, but this is an example of a 63-year-old uh, woman. She is about 125 pounds and she is five feet, four inches tall, right? So she's relatively lean. She has not had a previous fracture, does not have a family history, is not a current smoker, steroids, uh, RA, does not have secondary osteoporosis and does not drink three or more alcoholic units per day. So this is, again, this is kind of our typical patient that is healthy, is surprised by having a T-score of negative 2.8, right? So she's diagnosed with osteoporosis. Her doctor says, hey, here, take this drug. And she's like, but I just found this out and I don't have any symptoms and am I really at risk? Well, here's what the FRAC says. Her 10-year risk of major osteoporotic fracture is 14%. So it actually doesn't meet the threshold for medications, but look at her hip fracture, it does. So it's 3.2%, which is right above that threshold for recommendation of pharmaceuticals. So if her doctor were to recommend a drug, then they would be justified by this, this calculation tool. Now, would I put a patient like this on a drug? Not necessarily. So how would I manage this patient? Well, with our team approach, we always want to look at why our patient's losing bone. We know that this patient has a 10-year risk then of hip fracture of over 3%, which is concerning, but it's not alarming. I don't think she's going to fracture tomorrow or the next day. I can't say that with certainty, but it's unlikely that she's going to have this fracture really soon. So we want to get active, get going, and start being proactive on how to figure out why is she losing bone? If she's gonna take a drug, what drug should it be? But I think that's even too premature. I wanna use our 4R method, and I wanna recognize why she's losing bone. I wanna reverse those causes of bone loss and then retest and see what direction we're going and then revive her life and help her live without the fear of fracture. The most important parts there are recognizing, reversing, and retesting, right? So we can do that over the next six months. If we can recognize why she's losing bone, retest and make sure we're headed in the right direction, then I bet we can take that negative 2.7 or 2.8 T-score, whatever it was, and we can start bending that up so that she's no longer osteoporotic and no longer meets that criteria for pharmaceuticals. And we do that relatively consistently in six to 12 months. So I, I with this patient, would offer that route first, rather than starting with a pharmaceutical to potentially avoid the side effects of those pharmaceuticals. But I wanna reiterate that it is not wrong to recommend a pharmaceutical if the traditional medical system doesn't have the ability to really offer 
a non-pharmaceutical option. If that doctor doesn't have the capacity to offer good nutrition advice, doesn't have the ability to look from a functional testing perspective what's in the gut, doesn't have the ability to recommend supplementation outside of vitamin D and calcium, which are the general recommendations, it's just not what they do. So what they can do is prevent your initial or secondary fracture by offering a drug. That's what they're going to do, and that's okay. If you want something different, you have to look somewhere else. So thanks for listening to this video on fracks. If you found this helpful, please sign up for notifications, like, and subscribe, and share this with anybody else that you think would find benefit from this information. If you wanna learn more about how we manage osteoporosis or how you can potentially manage it better yourself, look for the link for our free masterclass in the description below. And lastly, I wanna hear from you. Please leave comments, leave questions. We love interacting with our YouTube audience. So leave all that information down below and we'll get back to you on a daily basis. If you have recommendations for other topics, please leave those too. We are creating and we will always update a list and the most popular topics are the things that we're gonna do next. So let us know what you wanna hear about.